Hello, one of my favorite topics is dental aesthetics. So let's talk about the fundamentals of dental aesthetics, and in particular, how it's related to aesthetic restorative dentistry. The incisal plane of the maxillary anterior teeth should basically be parallel to the lower lip. The incisal plane of the central incisors should be parallel to the pupillary line. In other words, a line drawn between the pupils, and that represents the horizon or the bench top or the floor. You would like the incisal plane to make a subtle U, kind of like a banana or a quarter moon, with the central incisors always being the longest teeth. Now, how much longer are the central incisors? It's considered a very youthful look if the central incisors are significantly longer than the lateral incisors. Because over time, people tend to wear off their central incisors. And if people don't have a night guard and they grind their teeth at night, many times you'll see all the anterior teeth being the same length. But that's not the natural state, and that's not what you would see in a younger person. The interproximal contacts are not in the center of the tooth. Between the central incisors, they're in the incisal one-fourth of the tooth. Then they slowly move apically between the central and the lateral and the lateral and the cuspid. The height of gingiva, the height of gingiva is not in the center of the tooth. It's actually toward the distal of the tooth. This is the height of the gingival line on the central, the lateral, and the cuspid. It's not in the dead center of the tooth. Again, then the gingival line of the central and the cuspid, central incisor and cuspid, is a little more apical than the height of the gingival line on the lateral incisor. Some important aesthetic considerations. The central should be longer than the laterals and cuspids. When viewed from the front, the central incisors should always be the longest teeth. If they're not, you develop a reverse incisal plane, which makes the person look strange and look like they're frowning. You can see the centrals are the longest teeth in the incisal plane when viewed from the front. There should be tooth display with lips in repose. Now, when you were in dental school, they said you want to see about two millimeters of tooth display with lips in repose. That's not exactly right because, as I'm going to address in a moment, there are different lip types. With any lip type, whether it's a flat lip, a moderately arched, or a maximally arched lip, you always want some tooth display with lips in repose. With a flat lip, like this person, you, you know, normally you'll have it a millimeter or a millimeter and a half. With a moderately arched lip, you may have half a tooth. With a maximally arched, you may display the entire tooth with the lips in repose. That means when the lip is just hanging, have the patient go, uh, and there should always be some tooth display 99% of the time when the lips are in repose. Otherwise, it looks like they have no teeth. A midline in the center of the face is of little consequence. Let me say that again. A midline in the center of the face is of little consequence. It's very difficult to change a midline. Now, you do want the midline to be perpendicular to the pupillary line. You want it to be straight up and down. You'd rather, if you're restoring teeth, you'd rather for it not to be crooked like this. But don't worry if the midline is in the center of the face. You can see Tom Cruise midline is off to the side. He's done all right. And this famous model's midline is off to the side. The studies show that a dentist or an orthodontist can't recognize a midline that's off less than two to three millimeters. And the lay person doesn't no notice a midline being off unless it's off more than four or five millimeters. So don't worry too much about midline, and certainly don't worry about the midline of the maxillary teeth being aligned with the midline of the mandibular anterior teeth. That's just consequential. I don't even know if my midlines are lined up, so don't worry about that. Midline is of very small consequence. 
The ideal smile displays the free gingival margins of the centrals along with 9.5 to 11 millimeters of central incisor tooth structure. I've got other seminars on the, gu the gummy smile. When's that an issue? The longest teeth you'll see occurring naturally is about a 12 millimeter central incisor. The average central incisor is 11 millimeters. So if somebody has significant gingival display, you can only crown lengthen to the point that the tooth display is say 11 or 12 millimeters. If it's gonna be longer than that, you don't want the patient to have a bunch of horse teeth. And so if there's significant gingival display, in other words, a gummy smile, the studies show that's not an aesthetic problem unless the patient has little bitty teeth. So if you can crown lengthen the teeth to the point that the patient has 10 to 12 millimeter teeth, that's as long as you want to make those teeth. You don't want them any longer or they'll look like they have horse teeth. If you were going to change and get rid of a gummy smile and they still had a significantly gummy smile and wanted to change it after the teeth from crown lengthening were 10 to 12 millimeters long, then you're talking about orthognathic surgery where you do an ostectomy and actually remove part of the palate. I would not recommend that. I've seen that done. And in my opinion, the result is often not very aesthetic. So uh, gingival display is not an aesthetic in my opinion, as long as the teeth are not tiny little teeth. So try to achieve a tooth length that's 10 to 12 millimeters and then just live a happy life with the extra gingival display. Most people are not going to look at that as unesthetic as long as the teeth are a good length. Yeah, the average central incisor is 11 millimeters from CEJ to incisal edge. There's something called a passive gingival eruption. That means that the CEJ is under the gum. So take a periapical radiograph and measure from the CEJ to the incisal edge and see if part of the coronal part of the tooth is under the gingival tissue, meaning it hasn't erupted completely. So in those cases, just do a periodontal crown lengthening. Now remember, a periodontal crown lengthening is not a gingivectomy. It's a gingivectomy and an ostectomy. You generally have to remove bone in addition to the gingivectomy. So if someone had, say, eight or nine millimeters of tooth display, you took a periapical radiograph and there were three millimeters of the coronal part of the tooth subgingival to the CEJ. If you remove uh, tissue with a gingivectomy down to the CEJ, say you remove two to three millimeters of gingival tissue, it's important that the alveolar crest be three millimeters from the gingival line. So you can't just remove the gingiv gingival tissue with the gingivectomy. You do the gingivectomy and then you have to do the ostectomy so that the, the alveolar crest is three millimeters from the new gingival line. You can watch my videos on periodontal crown lengthening in the library of dentistrymasterclasses.com. The average lip moves seven and a half millimeters from repose to, fu to full smile. If it's a flat lip, now this person has a moderately or maximally arched lip and you classify lip position with the lip in repose. So it's when the lip is just hanging and from lip in repose to full smile with a flat lip will be about seven and a half millimeters. With a maximally arched lip, it's only gonna move a couple of millimeters. The gingival border of the anterior and posterior teeth should be symmetrical and parallel the incisal and occlusal planes, meaning the incisal plane should parallel the lower lip and then the incisal plane should flow seamlessly into the occlusal plane. The incisal plane should be parallel to the lower lip and the pupillary line. So this lower lip and the incisal plane should be parallel and the centrals should be parallel to the pupillary line. Now sometimes 
this side of the face is not symmetrical with this side. We've all seen the picture of John Kennedy where they superimpose the left side of his face on the right side of his face. And it looks like completely different people. When they do the left side on the right side, I think the face looks a little puffy. When they do the right side on the left side, it looks very slender. So oftentimes the teeth on one side or the other are not the same length. In the naturally occurring teeth, one side is not the same length as the other. So you start with the centrals being the same length, and then you just manipulate the incisal edges of the adjacent teeth so that it blends. If you have a short tooth, on, say a short lateral incisor, you'd rather not have more than two to three millimeters of restorative material cantilevered off the incisal edge or it's a pretty unstable restoration. Occlusal plane should extend from the incisal plane forming a U-shaped arch. So from the second molar through the central incisors to the other second molar, it should look like a U or a horseshoe with the central incisors being the longest and most dominant teeth. You can see how this incisal plane parallels the lower lip. I wrote this article years ago on lip position because I've always taken lots of photographs of teeth and taken magazine uh, photographs of models and people that are considered to be highly attractive and studied their their smiles and I noticed that there were different lip types and I classified the lip types as flat moderately arched and maximally arched and you classify the lip type when the lip is in repose not when the patient is smiling when the lip is hanging. So this article is in the library of dentistrymastersclasses.com and I had three different types of lip classified when the patient is in repose. The flat lip, a lot of men have a flat lip and in these cases only a small amount of tooth display is present when the lip is in repose, maybe one or two millimeters. With a moderately arched lip in repose, the patient displays about a half of a tooth when the lip is in repose. With a maximally arched lip, and I've only seen a few of these in my years of practice, the entire tooth is displayed with the lip in repose along with just a bit of gum tissue. So when the patient smiles, these flat lips move about seven and a half millimeters. The moderately arched move about four millimeters and the maximally arch only move about two millimeters. So this is the straight lip and you see with a straight lip you just want to see some tooth, have some tooth display with the lip in repose. And again you always want the central incisors to be the longest teeth in the incisal plane. So some tooth display with lips in repose. With the moderately arched lip, these people are normally going to display about a half a tooth. A lot of models have moderately arched lips. And again, you want the centrals to be the longest teeth and the incisal plane to parallel the lower lip and the incisal plane of the central incisors to parallel the pupillary line. Now, in this case, this patient had pretty short teeth. I think they were seven or eight millimeters long. The CEJ was under the gingival tissue about this long. So we did a periodontal crown lengthening on her, which is a gingivectomy and an ostectomy to increase the length of the teeth just a bit at her request. So this patient has a maximally arched lip, meaning when her lips are just hanging, they're just in repose, she says, ah. Uh, and they look like this. With the maximally arched lip, the entire tooth is displayed and oftentimes some of the gingival tissue. So when she smiles, the lip only moves a couple of millimeters. What about tooth size? In men, the average central incisor is 10 and a half, I always say 11 millimeters long, 
and the cuspid is a little shorter from CEJ to incisal edge than the central. The lateral incisor is about eight and a half to nine millimeters long. In men, the, la the central is about eight and a half to nine millimeters wide. So the centrals are the key teeth about, in men, about 11 millimeters long, eight and a half to nine millimeters wide. In women, a little bit shorter, but I generally use the men length and widths for men and women. And so I always assume that the central, the ideal central incisor is about 11 millimeters from the CEJ to the incisal edge and about eight and a half or nine millimeters wide with the lateral being a little bit thinner widthwise than the central about six and a half or seven I usually say eight seven and a half or eight millimeters wide and then the cuspid is going to be about ten and a half or eleven also I usually think of it as the same length but it's not going to appear to be the same length because it's arcing up in the incisal plane and then about the same width so this is a pretty perfect smile the teeth fill the space between the lips. I think of the lips as the frame and the teeth as the picture. So the teeth fill the space between the lips, maybe with a little bit of gingival tissue showing, but not a lot. And these teeth are about 11 millimeters long. You can see the incisal plane perfectly parallels the lower lip and the widths are very nice. Yeah, so this patient had square teeth. They were about 10 and a half or 11 millimeters long and 10 and a half, 11 millimeters wide, which is not a real aesthetic tooth. This was a real stocky male and he had pretty square teeth. These were some of the longest teeth I've seen, which are 12 millimeters long and they're about nine millimeters wide. So this is a, but this is an attractive tooth. Those are the fundamentals of dental aesthetics. If you keep those in your mind, when you're restoring cases, the lengths, the widths of teeth, the incisal plane, the fact the centrals are the longest teeth, the incisal plane paralleling the pupillary line and the lower lip, the incisal plane blending seamlessly into the occlusal plane, meaning you don't want to step between the incisal plane and the occlusal plane. This will help you with your dental aesthetic cases. That's the Dental Minute. These techniques work and they work every time. Don't you want to take your practice to the top tier? Subscribe to DentistryMasterclasses.com for an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos plus many complete comprehensive cases and so many important articles that you can only find right here. New cases are added weekly and it's only $20 a month. Subscribe today.